So you must know these five methods. So we start with a flow chart again. So this flow chart is super duper important. Same as the same as the, the sol, uh, solubility table of sorts. Huh? So I would tell you how this works, this table works. So this this summarize methods of preparation. So you have all your five methods here. So you start the the question will always give you some exam uh, some something that they want to produce. Let's say they want to produce copper sulfate. So using this flow chart, you will check whether copper sulfate is soluble in water or not. It's soluble. It's soluble. It's soluble. Okay, so if it's soluble, then this option cross out, so it'll be this three. Okay. So then if it's this three, then you will acid plus base. Copper sulfate, the acid will be sulfuric acid. Plus base will be copper oxide or copper hydroxide. Can okay, list out like that. Then acid, or you can use acid plus carbonate to produce copper sulfate. That means you get sulfuric acid and copper carbonate. Then last one, copper metal plus sulfuric acid. Is that possible? Is that possible? Yeah. Possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's not possible. It's possible. Not possible. Because met, uh, copper is a not rea non reactive metal. Okay. So then the starting materials will be all this that I listed. You can choose either acid plus base or acid plus carbonate. So now you progress. Acid plus carbonate. So you progress. You progress and then after that, there are the starting materials for the salt soluble in water. Yes or no? Yes. Mm, if you use copper carbonate, copper carbonate is not soluble in water. You must check your solubility table. So copper carbonate is insoluble in water, so you cannot use titration. Hmm. So, and you have chosen this method. Okay. You have chosen this method. So then if the question tells you, please describe the method to produce copper sulfate like this with that method you decided. So you know it's an acid plus excess insoluble carbonate. So you will go back to your acid plus insoluble carbonate. Describe the whole process for them using whatever that method, the description is provided here. That's what how you the it. Acid in the beaker. Yes, then add copper. Then add copper carbonate. Until, Until no, no more, more can dissolve. Yeah. Then filter, then filter to remove the, the excess copper carbonate. Then collect the filtrate. Uh, which is copper sulfate. Then, then concentrate, crystallize, and filter. Yes. The, then, then you get copper the sulfate. Crystal. Copper sulfate. Mm. Then you get copper sulfate. Okay, back to this. I'm going to erase and then explain another one. How do I erase this? Eraser. I saw eraser option. Erase all the ink on slide. Okay.
Okay, back to this. So let's say now I want to get ammonium, ammonium sulfate. I want to prepare ammonium sulfate. Okay, so you tell me about it. O-S-O-4 plus ammonium hydroxide. So, okay, first, first obstacle is the salt solute uh, prepared uh, pre uh, to be prepared soluble in water. Yes, no. Yes. Yes, yes. so here, no. Okay, so you will use you were saying ammonium H2, what? H2SO4 yeah. and H4OH. Okay. Okay. So you can also use ammonium hydroxide plus uh what? Can I? No, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Ammonium carbonate. Use ammonium carbonate plus sulfuric acid. Then no metal here, so bye-bye. Then down to the next obstacle are the starting materials for the salt, soluble or insoluble. Soluble. Okay, so it's soluble, so you don't use this. So you auto transfer this to here. Then how? So you know it's titration. So then you go to your titration process. Describe titration. So you just take the whole. The whole answer from here, change the reactor names. Then you'll be okay. Okay. So last example. Last example. Hmm. I want to prepare silver chloride. Tell me about it. Silver hydroxide, yes, hydrochloric acid. Mm? You have to check this first. Is it soluble in water? Yes. Silver chloride soluble in water? No. Okay, so it's this side no more. So it's this whole branch is gone. So you need precipitation. precipitation. So you know precipitation in front comes from something, behind comes from another solution. So what can I use here and what can I use the here? Behind comes from hydrochloric acid. Okay, then in front. The silver hydroxide. Silver hydroxide. You remember these two must be soluble in water. Silver hydroxide is not soluble in water. Silver carbonate. Silver carbonate is also not soluble in water. Check your solubility table. You need a solution related to silver that is soluble. That you, you need a solution that is silver sulfate. Silver sulfate soluble in water. Is it so? Okay. Most sulfates are soluble except for calcium, barium, and lead. So silver sulfate is soluble. Okay, pass. So we'll go back. Silver sulfate. Then what's next? So you have these two, 
Then you go back to the precipitation method here. So you will have silver sulfate and hydrochloric acid. Then you pour them together. Then you stir until no more precipitate forms. Then you filter the mixture, collect the silver chloride. Then, uh, then allow the precipitate to dry between a piece of filter paper. Then you wash the precipitate. Oh, no. no, you wash the precipitate first, then you, you uh, dry it on filter paper. Something like that. What is the name of this technique? Next one. Huh? State the type of sol soluble or insoluble prepared by this method. Soluble. Okay, now this is an explanation question. So you have to explain why uh, this technique is the most suitable to prepare this salt. Uh, you, I would suggest you write something that you think you will hand up for a test paper. So write in that manner. Why is it most suitable? Both reactants are equals and the product is soluble. So reactants are equals, then you need the exact amount of alkali to neutralize the fixed volume of acid because the excess cannot be the excess reactant cannot be removed easily. So you have to mention this this part because if it cannot be removed then you will use this if it can be removed easily then you will not be using titration anymore so you only got like say Half the answer? Okay, why is it this? Okay, I go down here. So it's still red. Spelling mistake. One. Yeah, what he put. This one? Name a suitable indicator. I have one indicator in mind, but I think another one will work too. What is a suitable indicator? Yeah, okay. Phenolphthalein works too. Describe and explain the importance of using indicator Y in this preparation of salt. Describe and explain. So, it would be a relatively long answer. So write some write something. It is important to know the exact amount of NaOH that has completely reacted with oh, acid. Uh -huh. So so what does indicator Y do? Indicate what kind of Indicator. What kind of the react the product is? What acid the pro what sort of the product is? Mm. Indicator Y tells you when neutralization takes place. So what happens? So when neutralization takes place, the mixture will only have uh, the salt and there will not be any sodium hydroxide and there will not be any HCl. So 
So when you use indicator Y, you know the point where neutralization takes place and you can identify the amount of sodium hydroxide and amount of HCl to use accurately. So, so you have your indicator. Now your answer will be a bit different. So you can say that uh, so you have the metal orange change color, right? So you can say that metal orange is whatever, whatever color before and whatever color after. So because it's important to know uh, the exact amount of NaOH that, com that uh, reacts completely with uh, HCl. So the titration will stop when metal orange change to another color. So you can avoid excess amount of blah, blah, blah. So the hydroxide being added into the thing, into the acid. So you can just change your answer in that way. But all, all in all, it's just you have to indicate that uh, it will tell you, the change in color will tell you the amount of, oh yeah, the change in color will tell you a, when neutralization takes place and it will tell you the amount of sodium hydroxide to use to react with a certain amount of HCl. Okay, then you have one question like this, explain why universal indicator is not used as indicator Y. It's a variety color, so it's a, uh, e, e, yeah. Lithium nitrate is a salt that can be prepared by reacting an acid with alkali, 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 whatever you call it. Suggest the suitable reactants. So what acid to use, what base to use? Lithium hydroxide and nitric acid. Okay. Name the method to for this salt preparation. And both reactants are equal solution then. And some more. And the product is soluble. Mm. Another question with drawing. Yeah. Next. What is solution? Next. Water. Why water? Because if I add it, could be some people. So you're. And then it's not very acid, yeah, copper two hydroxide. Mm. So the copper two hydroxide is the black color substance. Oh. Mm. The copper two hydroxide is this. Then you say add to sulfuric acid, that means this one must be sulfuric acid. Yeah. I thought the solution X is the residue. Then, uh, solution X, you filter, then the residue will be the copper hydroxide because this is not soluble. Then the, fil the filtrate will come out as copper sulfate because all the acid has been used up. You, you have, what they do is they take a lot of copper hydroxide, throw it into sulfuric acid. So when there's sulfuric acid, the, sulf uh, the copper hydroxide will dissolve. Then you keep pouring in uh, copper hydroxide, then the sulfuric acid will be used up. So when it's used up, right, then you will, it will not dissolve copper hydroxide anymore. So then you will filter. When you filter, right, whatever you filter, the filtrate will be copper sulfate. Then the few, the residue will be copper hydroxide. There will not be any sulfuric acid left because all has been reacted by copper hydroxide. So it's sulfuric acid. So because the reason why you use sulfuric acid is because you want sulfate salt. Sulfate salt can only be obtained from sulfuric acid. Part C, a solid substance is added to excess in excess to the solution X. When solid substance is left in the solution, it filters, it is filtered and forms a residue of filter paper. 
So you're supposed to name two possible solid substances that forms the residue on the filter paper. So just now you mentioned copper hydroxide. Copper hydroxide is one that you can use. What else can you use? Anything else? Thing. <laughs> yeah, you can have another copper carbonate. Hmm. Then C part to explain your answer. Why you use copper hydroxide and why you would use copper oxide? You can write down your answer while I go and pick up something. Okay, both react with sulfuric acid to form copper sulfate. Okay. Next one. Okay. So you have to explain why solid substance is added in excess. I kind of gave the answer just now. So as to make sure that all the acid is used up. Filter the solution. Okay. Eating the solution until saturated. To allow crystallization of copper sulfate easily. Okay. Okay, this write a balanced chemical equation. So you start with your word equation, then your then your balanced chemical equation. I want to see the working. My answer to typo. Yeah, so you have to describe this. I'll leave this to next time. 